with John Rowland, Cora Ann Mahalik, Nick Gregory with weather, and Carl White with sports. Good evening. It's getting close to sunset in Los Angeles, and there is no sign yet that police or National Guard troops have been able to put a firm stop to the looting, arson, and murder there. From President Bush to the governor, mayor, local leaders, everyone asking for calm and denouncing the thugs who are running wild in the streets. But the fires are still being started, and the stealing is so bad, some of the looters were being robbed by other looters. And people are stocking up on batteries and candles, afraid of power failures as the fires continue to burn. You can see the smoke for 70 miles. Buses aren't running, schools and businesses are shut down. Bill Ritter has more now from Los Angeles. There is a bloody, fiery free-for-all throughout much of Los Angeles tonight. The hard facts, 13 people dead, nearly 450 injured, almost 2,000 arson fires. It's a horrible and, frankly, frightening situation, and police admit it could get worse. Total anarchy. That's the only way to describe the sheer chaos that now rules the streets of Los Angeles. Actual arrests are rare. Roving youth gangs loot and pillage almost at will. Here, right in front of us, somebody running away with a sharp TV set, a lady with hands full of clothing. And look, up, up, two, two people look like their sisters almost, just packing up the back of oh, that little chevette. just hit this woman. He just hit that woman. Here, here a guy just hit a woman and took what she was... I mean, he, he hit a man, what, is actually. Was it a man? Was Sorry, he carrying a box? Man. It looked yeah, like he, he was, was carrying, carrying a box, a TV set. Two males get out of a, a van, hit the guy and take his TV set. Three men in the front, front of that truck just laughing after they got in bed in the truck and driving off with a TV set that they stole from another looter. Actual arrests are rare. Roving youth gangs loot and pillage almost at will. Raging fires now ring the city, filling an otherwise clear blue sky with gray smoke and black soot. Throughout the day, police and firefighters were badly outnumbered, and when firefighters did arrive, they were often attacked. And hundreds of stores have been reduced to rubble. In Spanish, Los Angeles means city of angels, but frankly, it doesn't look like much of one tonight. This is instead a city of war, death, and destruction. And the big question now, how and when will it all end? Reporting live from South Central Los Angeles, Bill Ritter, Fox News. Thank you very much, Bill. One of the dead was a van driver. The beating that caused his death was witnessed by a TV camera crew in a helicopter. They're pulling the driver out of the van and they're kicking the driver and beating the driver. The driver's only uh, mistake was entering the city. He's been kicked in the head. He's laying in the street. Okay, this is it. Terrible, terrible pictures. This is what the, all this guy did was enter this area. That's his only crime. Hit the siren, Doug. Yes. He, okay, this guy is laying in the street. Hit the siren, Doug. That van driver later died. Bob Brill is a reporter for AP Radio News. He was beaten up while filing a live report. Uh, now I see smoke. Something. Can't tell. Oh, God! Oh! No, 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 no! Pearl says he'll be okay. He escaped with bumps and bruises. Another reporter was shot while covering the riot. Jeff Kramer, working for the Boston Globe, was shot as he sat in his car. A black family drove him to the hospital. He is listed in stable condition at this hour. Well, the White House acted quickly. President Bush denounced the violence and also said that he would like to make a federal case out of Rodney King's beating. Brian Wilson reports. A flurry of early morning meetings at the White House to discuss the Rodney King verdict and the violence in Los Angeles. Among those summoned, Attorney General William Barr. The president emerged from those meetings and asked for restraint. I urge all Americans to approach this situation with calm, with tolerance, and with a respect for the rights of all individuals under the Constitution. We are concerned about any question of excessive police violence and we are equally concerned about excessive public violence. The murder and destruction in the streets of Los Angeles last night and today must be stopped. I want everyone to know that the federal government will continue to pursue its legal responsibilities in this case. 
Minutes later, Attorney General Barr held a news conference to say, since the state trial is now over, the Justice Department will accelerate its civil rights investigation. We have now moved forward with our own federal complete investigation of this incident to determine whether there has been a violation of federal civil rights statutes. According to some reports, a preliminary FBI investigation uncovered possible legal roadblocks to a civil rights conviction in the Rodney King case. FBI Director William Sessions refused to comment on that. The Los Angeles riots delayed but did not cancel the president's planned campaign trip to Columbus, Ohio. But once there, his campaign message was overshadowed by questions about the situation in Los Angeles. The next step, a meeting between President Bush and civil rights leaders. The Justice Department says since 1988, it has filed 123 cases of police brutality with a 75% conviction rate. And in most of those cases, those convictions came after local juries returned acquittals. At the White House, Brian Wilson, Fox News. Jerry Brown was governor of California for eight years. He said it's an outrage the system didn't punish the four officers who beat Rodney King. He also admitted that he doesn't have much of a chance of beating Bill Clinton. Governor Clinton was focusing his attention on the president, and he continued to attack Mr. Bush when he reacted to the verdict and the violence. I think there should be a, a call for people to abide by the law, but in that connection, I think the president also should have acknowledged the deep feelings that all Americans have who saw those films repeatedly. Uh, and I think he should encourage the Attorney General to look into this. Jesse Jackson also wants federal charges filed against those four officers. By early this afternoon, the wave of rage rolled east of Los Angeles in Atlanta. A march by about 100 people to the state capitol turned ugly. Bystanders pelted by rocks and beaten. In Madison, Wisconsin, angry gangs shattered windows in dozens of police cars. Fortunately, no injuries were reported. Well, the riots in Los Angeles were on the minds of some high school students in Queens this morning. Got ugly there. A white student at John Adams High School in South Ozone Park was beaten up by six blacks. Before they punched him, they said, this is for L.A. He's all right, but he needed quite a few stitches. Those pictures from L.A. frightened many New Yorkers, including those who ultimately must ensure the safety of our streets. Christopher Jones reports. At the very least, this apparent egregious miscarriage should be responded to by the president insisting that all federal civil rights laws be thoroughly and effectively prosecuted immediately. As the chief executive of the state, Governor Mario Cuomo picked up the general mood of many New Yorkers in the wake of the acquittal of the four police officers in the beating of Rodney King. I feel like I'm an endangered species. It's like, who do you go to for justice? When in my gut, I know in today's society, there's no such thing as justice. But as Governor Cuomo continued, he also picked up another theme expressed by New Yorkers. We must try harder to deal with the underlying causes that produced it without using, without encouraging, without allowing violence as an answer to violence. There are a number of responses happening around this country, and many of them are totally inappropriate to the situation. Violence only begets violence. And that lesson from the church seemed to be taking hold on the streets of New York. But it did not prevent some merchants and residents of some areas of the city from taking precautions just in case. The church bells of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in Upper Manhattan tolled in sympathy with the people of Los Angeles. Now the task of many state and city leaders is to make sure New York in no way repeats the events of Los Angeles. Some in Los Angeles have chosen to express their outrage and anger and frustration. While that anger is understandable, their assault upon life and property is not understandable, and they cannot be condoned. It was not difficult to find outrage over the Rodney King verdict. It was difficult to find anyone who believes rioting is the answer. Meanwhile, here in New York, there is a sense of waiting for the other shoe to drop. But as Mayor Dinkins has pointed out, New York has always marched to its own drum. So why shouldn't it be different this time? Why shouldn't New York live in peace, even if other cities decide to riot? At City Hall, Christopher Jones, Fox 5 News. And coming up next, one of the King jurors talked about the verdict. The New York Police Department learned from experience how to handle riots. The search continues for the president of Exxon International.
And Bill Cosby's daughter has a familiar story to tell about when she met Mike Tyson. Why spend all that time and money traveling to Disneyland? Discover Six Flags Great Adventure right here. 500 acres of rides, shows, and family fun. All the thrills, all the excitement, and all the fun of our great 1992 season are here. So take a drive in the country to Six Flags Great Adventure, because it's a whole lot closer and a whole lot bigger than Disneyland. Six Flags Great Adventure. Nothing else comes close. Bring a can of Coca-Cola Classic or caffeine-free Coca-Cola Classic and save. Hey, you. Yeah, you on the couch. What are you doing watching TV? Come on, get up. Nothing you're watching could possibly compare to getting a deal on the Nissan Maxima right now. Come on, you're missing an incredible price. And there's a special lease rate on Maxima you better catch now, because there won't be a rerun. <laughs> Less than one week left for special savings on Maxima. See your Nissan dealer now. So, what are you watching that's better than this? <laughs> This portion of the news brought to you by the Ninex family of companies. My name is Daryl Rogers, and I'm from Ninex Mobile Communications. Hey, Daryl, how's doing? everything? How you been? How you doing? Yeah, this is Daryl calling from Ninex. Yeah, hi, this is Daryl. Wanda! If any of my customers call me with a problem, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to make sure that they get their problem straight now. Before we package it and bring it over to her, I do want to get together with her to find out if we're getting the right phone. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, Thanks for everything, Hillary. Bye -bye. I enjoy helping people. I've always enjoyed helping people. Then you can dial your mobile number. That's it? That's it. Come on, Daryl! <laughs> We find the phone or the phone equipment based on the customer's needs, and I'll oversee the entire operation. And no matter where you are or what you're doing, you have to communicate. I knew I'd hear from you soon. It's a new telephone. There's so much to tell about 9X Mobile. Communication is no longer a luxury. It leaves time to enjoy other things. It leaves time for living. Most of the King jurors aren't talking about their feelings or their verdict. They saw the same graphic home video you have seen over and over. And to those who say the beating Rodney King took was not only vicious but racist, one juror who'd agreed to speak only if we didn't identify her insisted race was not an issue. It was not a racist issue. Had it been a matter of uh, a bunch of white policemen out to get a bunch of black men, they would have indeed <laughs> excuse me, done damage to all three of the car's occupants, not just one of them. Now, we haven't heard from Rodney King. His lawyer says he has seen the riots and he's been traumatized. But speaking out, as some think, some think that he should, would not help. Coran? And, John, a number of big events in L.A. were put on hold until the streets cooled down. The NBA playoff game between the Clippers and the Utah Jazz has been called off until Saturday. The L.A. Dodgers-Phillies game also was postponed. Schools, courthouses, and freeways all are closed. And officials here in our city have denounced the violence in Los Angeles, and they are working to head off anything like that here. Jeff Weiser reports. The Los Angeles riots have sparked concern in New York City, where civil disturbances are not uncommon. At a news conference, Police Commissioner Lee Brown said he deplores the riots and violence in Los Angeles. He was completely surprised at the jury's verdict, and he talked about New York City Police Department policies to prevent similar occurrences here in New York. We added some precautionary procedures. And Brown says a blue ribbon panel was called in. They found that our officers were increasingly restrained, even in the face of increasing street violence. That was due in large part to training and a system of rigorous accountability. Some cops on the street agree that restraint is stressed. Sure, sure, that's, trained, uh, that's taught to you in the academy. Day one. And it's taught again every day at, at training before you go out onto the streets. But that was apparently not always the case. The vivid pictures from New York City's Tompkins Square riots in the summer of 88 show how New York City police got out of hand in trying to control that situation. And there are plenty of other civil disturbances where police tactics were criticized. Following the riots of the 1960s, including the ones in Watts, Los Angeles, a presidential commission released its report recommending how police should respond to riots. What they found was that the effective police tactic is to respond immediately to incidents at the very beginning and to take very immediate, very effective act action to handle incidents while they're small. Of course, it's important to handle those incidents in a way that does not exacerbate the situation. 
Already there's criticism being leveled against the Los Angeles Police Department for a delayed response to the riots. From Manhattan, this is Jeff Weiser, Fox 5 News. The search continues tonight for that executive from Exxon who vanished yesterday morning. Authorities are having a tough time finding any clues. Eric Sean has the latest. Still, no breaks in the disappearance of Sidney Riso. The 57-year-old president of Exxon International was last seen by his wife Patricia as he left for work yesterday morning from his home in exclusive Morris Township, New Jersey. 24 hours later, police stand guard on Riso's quiet road near where his empty car, door open and engine running, was found abandoned at the end of his driveway. FBI agents swarmed over the neighborhood as authorities conducted a detailed search for evidence. Use the term grid search, and that, that's, that's an appropriate term. It's a, an investigative technique that has to be fulfilled, and we're about to, uh, we're going to undertake that as soon as we possibly can. Riso never made it to his office at the Global Giants Foreign Operations Headquarters in nearby Florham Park. Investigators are treating his vanishing as a missing persons case. They don't know if Riso was kidnapped because so far there has not been a ransom demand. Corporate security expert Michael Burns says executive abductions are rare in America. There are situations, for example, if a person is feeling ill uh, or suffering some kind of physical distress, to literally get out of their car and walk away. So uh, at this point, we have no knowledge as to whether that possibility occurred. One Exxon colleague describes Riso as a hard-working, down-to-earth guy. He attends church many Sundays, is an avid golfer at the Springbrook Country Club, and lives here in a $680,000 four-acre home with his wife of 37 years. They have four adult children. One son reportedly died in an accident a few years ago. For authorities, Mr. Riso's case has sparked an intense manhunt for the multimillionaire business leader. But for his wife and family, his disappearance is a personal tragedy and the anguish only deepens the longer he is missing. In Morris Township, New Jersey, I'm Eric Sean, Fox 5 News. Still ahead with the latest on the rioting in L.A. for you. Arsenio Hall joins the chorus of calls for calm. I knew people who were users a long time ago, but I've eliminated them all. Are you a user or a use -y? We'll find out. Plus, and you know what? I like myself. We'll learn the laws of liking ourselves. And can Larry Hoff stay on his polo pony? Oh! <laughs> Tomorrow on Good Day New York and Good Day First Edition at 6 o'clock. So you can watch Oprah at 4 and then you can switch over to Fox and watch Jane at 5. It's a perfect world. Jane, a new kind of talk. Weekdays at 5 on Fox 5. It's Toyota's Automotive Achievement Awards celebration, saluting the greats of 92 for best resale value in its class, Toyota Truck. Named best resale value, the 92 Toyota Truck has won praise from the press and audiences everywhere. And to thank the people who made the award possible, you can drive home the new Toyota 4x2 for under 8,000. And this month only, no payments for 90 days. See all the winners at your Toyota dealer today. It's Macy's Audio Week. Sensational values, the latest technology. Techniques 130 watt system with five disc changer, high speed dubbing, and Dolby surround. Close out $799. Sony's five disc shelf system with dual deck, now just $499. Sony's portable CD system with graphic equalizer and cassette deck. Price break $179.99. Macy's Audio Week sale, now through Saturday. found a radio station the entire office can agree on and listen to all day. Yeah, Light. Light FM. W-L-T-W. The 1992 Mercury Grand Marquis. Starting a new tradition in safety with available dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. So think smart, think safe, think Grand Marquis. Buy smart at your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. Talk show host Arsenio Hall is calling for an end to the madness on the streets of South Central L.A. Arsenio and actor Edward J. almost met with community leaders in a church just a block away from where cars and buildings still are burning. Arsenio is asking for calmer heads to prevail. I just want my people to understand there is a way we have to go about solving this problem. We cannot 
solve the problem of vi violence in our society uh, by police officers by using violence on innocent people. We can't pull random white people out of cars and beat them up to show them how it feels. That's the wrong way. Arsenio plans to address the fallout from the Rodney King verdict during his show tonight. A group of Greenpeace activists who oppose the Bush administration's plans to reduce greenhouse gases literally had to be pried free by police during a demonstration this morning. Sixteen protesters, including two climbers who climbed down the U.N. Plaza Hotel, were arrested during that demonstration. Police say the activists climbed over a fence surrounding the U.N. and locked themselves to flagpoles and a fence. They are charged with criminal trespass, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. All right, we're trying to keep it right up to the minute of all the late developments happening in Los Angeles. So we're going to go back now to L.A. Bill Ritter is in South Central L.A. where this has all been going on. For an update, Bill. John, uh, it is total anarchy really here, chaos in the streets. L.A. has become, or much of L.A., I should say, has become a bloody, fiery free-for-all. Much of the streets are cordoned off. Fire rings the sky, the sunset sky is uh, uh, throughout much of, the, of Los Angeles. If we had time, I'd have the camera do a 360. It's almost just a blanket of haze and black smoke. It's really a horrible and frightening situation. Police tell us it could get a lot worse. Let's take a look at the sights and sounds of what this riot has meant today. was enter this area. That's his only crime. Hit the siren, Doug. Then I asked the cop to help me, and they told me they couldn't. Okay, David, can we just move the car and go? <laughs> the car's not worth anything. Yeah, get your briefcase. Come on, just yeah. get the briefcase, get my car, and let's get out of here. People, again, just helping themselves. of the store, goes in, picks out a recliner chair, comes out and puts it on top of the car and, and drives off. It's an idiotic, very idiotic thing to burn up your own neighborhood. Well, as you can see, pretty dramatic stuff. Uh, police do not know when and how all this might end. The National Guard, of course, has been called up. Misconception about the National Guard. They are brought in once an area is secured. Their weapons are not even loaded. They carry the clips on their side, and then they load them when they have to. Hopefully, that won't happen. We are now looking at live pictures right next to, uh, right, apparently, what I'm told, right near the uh, Fox Studios in Hollywood. Commercial building is on fire. Firefighters are uh, trying to battle this flaze. Uh, we were also told a little while ago there were apparently shots fired near the Fox stations and studios uh, in Hollywood. This is about five miles north of where uh, much of the uh, hot spots have been. So the problem areas and the riots and the looting, and now you see the arson fires, have moved north into the predominantly uh, Caucasian, in fact, uh, area of Hollywood. We're going to go uh, live now to uh, KTTV, the local Fox affiliate in Los Angeles. Ghost town that we hear so much about in Hollywood. And, and, and all of the, oh, all of the problems that Hollywood has had since the glory days faded away just seem to be all coming to, to a head tonight here along the boulevard with, with destruction beginning and this sense of lawlessness that has pervaded the city for about uh, 36 hours now finally touching uh, the walk of fame here in the place where dreams are supposed to come true. Tony, have you seen any sight of any uh, California National Guard troops? Not at all, Chris. Not at all anywhere. We have spent this entire day in the, uh, the East Hollywood area. We have not seen any of them at all. All we have seen is LAPD. We have not seen any of the uh, uh, CHP units that are supposed to be controlling access. None of that. Just uh, LAPD and L.A. City Fire. All right, Tony Valdez on Hollywood Boulevard near Wilcox. Those voices that you were hearing are from our station back in Los Angeles, and what you were seeing, that location, is just a couple of blocks from the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where all those stars are. Just a couple That's of right. blocks from there. The chaos is moving out further. All right, coming up, uh, we'll tell you about uh, Broadway. Uh, business is uh, booming on the Great White Way. And another runaway car accident, this time at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. We'll be right back.
Now here's something the man of the family can appreciate. The Sonata V6. It's so well built and worry free. It comes with free service and maintenance in addition to the regular warranty. But all you pay for is gas. So a guy can just take off, let the V6 rip be free, and be back in 52 minutes. The 92 Sonata from Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. See your Hyundai dealer now for a $1,500 rebate on Sonata. Heck, bring the whole family. We drove an engine 200,000 grueling miles using new Mobile One. Then we ripped it apart. What did we find? Nothing. Nothing. Virtually no engine wear. What kept these vital engine parts like new? This part. New advanced formula Mobile One. It keeps your engine running like new. This portion of the news brought to you by Chemical Bank. You'd have to search the world to find a checking account that gives you all the chemical debts. Like no fee checking with a minimum balance this low. And you'd search far and wide just to find 24-hour banking by phone where you could reach real people. You could travel to the ends of the earth trying to match chemical service. We even guarantee to speed you through a teller line in seven minutes or we'll pay you five dollars. So stop searching and come to Chemical, the only bank that gives you all this. And we're right around the corner. A school trip to O'Hare Airport in Chicago turned deadly. An 87-year-old man said he thought he was hitting the brakes of his car, but he picked up speed instead. He hit a group of school children on a field trip. A nine-year-old girl was killed, and 88 others were hurt. 88. Six of them are fighting for their lives. And seven people were hurt in Brooklyn this morning. Witnesses say that a tow truck ran a light and hit a school bus at Bradford and Sutter Avenues in the East New York section. Four children, two adults, and a bus driver were all taken to the hospital. The fifth victim of that car crash in Washington Square Park was laid to rest today. A funeral was held for Brian Fonseca in Lower Manhattan. Fonseca was exercising in the park when the car went out of control. He suffered massive head injuries and died on Sunday, one day after his 20th birthday. A number of you called us at Fox, generously offering financial assistance to the family. In other news, people are beginning to spend more money on entertainment, and companies are trying to cash in on it. Christopher Jones has that story in tonight's Fox Business News. The nation's largest entertainment company and the world's largest computer company have announced an unusual marriage. IBM and Time Warner hope to use computer technology to help consumers access entertainment and marketing services on Time Warner cable channels. If you want to buy an IBM computer, you won't have to go to the store. Just pick up the phone. The company is setting up an 800 number in its first attempt at direct marketing. A lot of people are giving their regards to Broadway. After a dismal season last year, box office numbers were the highest of any four-week period in New York theater history. More than 800,000 people went to the Great White Way. But I always think that the Broadway theater is kind of a leading indicator because of the very early in the 80s, Broadway did very well. There are continued signs of growth in the economy. The index of leading economic indicators edged up two-tenths of a percent. That is the third consecutive increase in that index. Chrysler got some bad news. While two out of the three of the major American car makers showed profits, Chrysler posted a $13 million loss. The company blamed the high cost of marketing for at least part of its money problems. Starting today, you can get information from TRW on your credit rating, and you don't have to pay for it. Just send the company a letter requesting your credit report. A big audience is expected to tune into The Tonight Show for Johnny Carson's final weeks. While NBC is saying goodbye to the host, it is cashing in on his exit by raising advertising rates. And in a move that some publishing experts call suicidal, Penthouse Magazine is trading in its nude cover girls for a more macho image. Calling the pinup passe, publisher Bob Guccione reveals George Foreman in the June issue. I'm Christopher Jones for Fox Business News. Wall Street had a pretty good day. The Dow closed up almost 26 points. Winning stocks beat the losers on the big board by a margin of better than 2 to 1. The price per share was up 28 cents. Over on the Amex, the price per share was up 14 cents. The index there up almost 5 points. Over the counter, the Nasdaq composite was up almost 9 points. Still ahead, we will take you back to Los Angeles. Fifteen people now have died, we're told.
Also, how Sheena Easton is feeling after collapsing. Bill Cosby's daughter tells about her fight against Mike Tyson. And Robin, talk to the new guy on 90210. Mazda just cooked up something a little offbeat. It's called the MX-3. It looks a little funky. It sounds cutting edge. And it's the first car in its class with a V6. So it feels smooth. Is this the car for you? That depends. Do you follow a different drummer? At your New York, New Jersey, and Fairfield County, Connecticut Mazda dealer, now. How you feeling, honey? I'm a belly. She feels really warm. We're going to the hospital. Tell Dad it's an emergency. U.S. Healthcare salutes all the medical providers who stand by us from the darkest of nights to the brightest of tomorrows. I love you tomorrow. You're always a day. U.S. Healthcare, a health plan for living. This portion of the news brought to you by the Cadillac Tri-Statesman, the Cadillac dealers of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. I just feel more in control in a European luxury sedan. The Cadillac Seville. In a fraction of a second, its speed-sensitive suspension retunes itself automatically for greater isolation on city streets and greater control on spirited performance roads. The Cadillac Seville. Drive one soon at your Cadillac Tri-Statesman. It could change the way you think about American automobiles. Let me just update our top stories for you, and then Carla Nick will be along to preview the sports and the weather. The death toll now in Los Angeles, at least 14. 450 people have been hurt, 300 arrested. But stores continue to be torched and looted, and businesses and schools and sporting events shut down. There's trouble in other cities. A peaceful march turned ugly in Atlanta when young blacks attacked whites. 26 people were hurt there. And the mayor has slapped a curfew on that city. And there are a few clues as to what happened to Exxon executive Sidney Riso. He vanished after he left his home in Morris County, New Jersey. Carl? Okay, John, coming up in sports, the entire sports world reacts to the unfortunate scene in Los Angeles. Nets playoff action against the Cavaliers, and the Mets look to sweep the Astros. Nick's what's coming up in weather? We need to sweep some of these rain showers that are in the area, Carl, and sweep them away. And I think that's going to be happening for some better weather to move back in. How about the weekend, though? Well, we've had problems with weekends lately. Will we have another problem this weekend? I'll have the details in just a little bit. Corian? Thank you, Nick. Boxer Mike Tyson is in prison in Indiana, serving out his rape conviction. Now another woman with famous roots is telling her frightening tale about Tyson. Steve Powers reports. Hey, Mike. Hey. hey, Dad. Look out. What's up, How you doing? All right. Oh, my graduating from college, baby. <laughs> What's all the luggage for, man? You're not moving back in here, are you? <laughs> on the same day when the most understanding father on television, Bill Cosby, was appearing for the last time as Dr. Huxtable, his estranged real-life daughter, Erin, was talking for the first time on television about what she says was a real-life drama involving none other than the former world heavyweight champ, Mike Tyson. Aaron described in a taping for the Donahue Show today here in New York, how back in 1989, she was invited to Mike Tyson's New Jersey home, his den. And he locked the door and he ran after me and the next thing I know, I'm on the ground, um, on my stomach, you know, with my hands behind my back. He has his one hand over my mouth, things like this. He never uh, hit me or anything like that. Um, and there was one instance where his hand 
was removed from my mouth and I did scream. And the woman apparently who was cleaning the house was walking around and I guess she heard and she knocked on the door. And I ran to the door and I just I ran out of there. Obviously, these are not the first allegations of sexual misconduct against Tyson. And he's now serving six years in Indiana in the rape of a Miss Black America contestant, Desiree Washington. So another story emerges about what ostensibly is another one of Mike Tyson's urges. This story by the daughter of what probably is the most famous parent in America. And one has to wonder that if these stories are true, how Mike Tyson got away with it all and beat the system until his recent conviction. In Manhattan, Steve Powers, Fox 5 News. Well, coming up next, we'll tell you how Sheena Easton's doing. And then Robin has a scoop on the hot new star on Beverly Hills 90210. Dodge Spirit, preferred overall to the Honda Accord in a recent survey comparing things like comfort, convenience, and performance. And now, a thousand cash back or 0% APR makes Spirit an even more obvious choice over the Honda Accord during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. See your Dodge dealer today and compare. What's the market doing? Do I need my coat? Another water main break? For all news all the time, Winds News Time Traffic Report. AccuWeather Forecast. 1010 10 wins every time. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Of course I killed them. I just aimed, shot, and killed those little creeps myself. Faster killing black flag ant and roach killer kills with an exterminator proven ingredient. They all deserve to die. Black flag. Friday, May 1st at select theaters. This portion of the news brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. You want to lease a Mercedes, but you don't want a long commitment. You could get a shorter term, but the payments might be too high. Introducing the win-win lease. Short term, less cost. It's like stumbling onto a bargain signed by Van Gogh. The Mercedes. Win-win lease. I'm going to take you back to L.A. now. I'm told that 18 people are now dead, have been killed back there in the rioting. Our reporter is Christine Gonzalez. She works for our station back there, the Fox station, KTTV. She filed a report from South Hollywood. That's not too far from the Walk of Fame, as I mentioned earlier. The latest for you on those fires. And come back to the fire scene over here. You can see that this is moving rather quickly, rather quickly over here in the corner of 6th and Western. There is no firefighting efforts. Mostly people were coming out with hoses of their own. Some of the owners were out here a little while ago, and uh, the engines are just not here right now. They're letting this one burn. The problem is that, if, Patty, if we can go a little bit, and I'm going to kind of cross underneath you, if you can look that way, you've got a whole block that is unprotected, and you've got a gun shop, a gun shop, over here, there you go, Patty, thank you. A gun shop, and it is about two stores away. Now, this is moving rather quickly, so we are gonna have to move out of here pretty soon. Again, the corner of 6th and Western, and curfew or no curfew, we have to tell you that we are surrounded by at least 50 people around us right now, and they're telling us they're not gonna go home. That is what they're telling us, and they also tell us they wanna know where the National Guard is and where are the firefighters. That is what's going on right here, just near Hollywood. This is definitely spreading people behind over here. And I don't know, it's kind of far away, but the smoke, you can see it off into the hills. You cannot see the hills anymore. All you can see and smell is smoke. 
Live in Western Hollywood, I'm Cristina Gonzalez, or Western and Sixth Avenue, excuse me. I'm Cristina Gonzalez, back to you in the studio. Now, Cristina, these people who are saying they're, they're not going to go home are not the troublemakers, once again. We want, want to make that clear. They're just afraid for their property? Well, you know, at this point, it is very hard to tell. The crowd around us is very calm. There are people that have come out of the buildings. There are a few people carrying things away, and there are people driving who are very upset, as you can see behind us. Just a few minutes ago, we all had to duck literally because a car drove by and we heard what we thought were gunshots and everybody just hit the street i can't tell you who the people are i know the people around us are from the buildings behind us but outside our perimeter those images that you saw of the looting are just down the street that was christina gonzalez reporting from l.a and now switching gears you may have noticed a new character was introduced tonight on beverly hills 90210 robin carter talked with the actor who could become tv's hottest new heartthrob, Robin. Thanks, Coran. Well, Luke Perry and Jason Priestley, 90210's resident hunks, have some competition on the way from an actor named Grant Show, who's been tapped to star in the 90210 spin-off Melrose Place, which will bow this summer and will feature not teenagers, but 20-something characters. Show won the plum part after some 700 other actors were auditioned, and he seems primed to make teenage hearts flutter. Are you ready to become uh, the next heartthrob? Bring it on. So being a, a, a sex symbol or a, a teen idol doesn't scare you? <clears throat> yeah, it's terrifying, actually. It really is. But if I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't be here. And here is at the center of Melrose Place. Named after the hip and funky L.A. neighborhood, the 90210 spinoff will deal with the problems of the 20-something crowd. And Grant Show will star as construction worker Jake Hansen, Luke Perry's character's mentor. Jake did things that Luke wanted to do. Like? Surfing, riding a motorcycle, and picking up chicks. And this isn't the first time that Luke Perry and Grant Show are meeting. They actually first met back in New York when they were both working on soap operas, Luke on Loving and Grant Show on Ryan's Hope. And it was in New York that Grant had a brief brush with a modeling career until he cut that very short. I did one job. Uh, I was not tall enough, so I'm standing in a box, you know, next to these other sort of Greek god guys. <laughs> Never felt attractive enough. Um, it just felt inadequate the entire time I was doing this job. And so I just never, I never went back again. I said, no, that's it. I'm not going to do this. I, can't, I don't like it. I don't care how much money they make. But Fox is counting on Grant Show being attractive enough to create the same kind of fan frenzy that turned 90210 into a monster hit. Sorry. Didn't mean to get personal. But let's get personal. Does Grant have a girlfriend? I just started seeing someone recently. Uh, it's. And it's been a long time since I've been, since I've dated anyone. So I, I don't know. I don't know if she's my girlfriend or not yet. Has it been hard for you to meet people? Um, hard to meet women that, uh, that I wanted to go out with, yeah. Well, it probably won't be hard anymore. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? I mean, if this show takes off anywhere close to what 90210 has, you're going to be mobbed by women. <laughs> Worst things could happen. And Grant Show will also be appearing in next week's episode of 90210, the season finale, in which his character, we're told, will get romantically involved with Kelly. John? All right, Robin, happy to tell you that Sheena Easton is feeling better. She collapsed on stage yesterday, as you know. She's in the revival of Man of La Mancha on Broadway. Turns out she had a stomach problem, upset stomach. She was feeling weak, spent the night at St. Luke's Hospital. Doctors let her go, though. She's going to be fine, but a few days off before she goes back to work. And still ahead, Nick will have the forecast for you. And then Carl has sports. The Nets hope to stay alive in the playoffs. We'll be right back. I have this fantasy where Steve takes me to this very romantic place for a candlelight dinner in his Nissan Pathfinder. <laughs> We sit at a table for two that has this really nice view. Experts agree that right now is the best time to borrow money because today's home financing rates are at their lowest levels in years. They are at Anchor Savings Bank, I can tell you that. So, if you're thinking about getting a new mortgage, refinancing an existing one, or taking out a home equity loan, don't do anything till you talk to your anchor banker. We're here for you. For the best in home financing, Anchor's the answer.
John Aldrich is about to come face to face with the most terrifying force known to man, his folks. Honey, Mom and Pop are gonna live with us for a while. You're much nicer than John's first wife. You were married before? Is there anything else I should know, John? Hi, Uncle John! Can I talk to you for a minute, please? Pray he survives. Tom Selleck, Don Amici, folks from the creators of Weekend at Bernie's, rated PG-13. Starts tomorrow at theaters everywhere. Tonight's weather report brought to you by your tri-state Lincoln Mercury dealer. The 1992 Lincoln Town Car and Continental are the only two American-made luxury cars providing standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. So think smart. Think safe. Think Lincoln. Buy smart at your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. Back now to our Fox station in Los Angeles. You see, you know, the looters and the disrespect that the people are having for the police officers who are working very, very difficult uh, times uh, out on the streets and the firefighters themselves. And I could honestly tell you, I could see that anxiety <coughs> and apprehension on firefighters' faces tonight as they would come in from relief uh, down in the South Central area. Some of the anxiety. I had an incredible story of firefighters that were uh, uh, held hostage for a, a brief moment with AK-47s uh, waved in front of their faces, told told that they were going to die, um, and they were just there in the community community to help the community. So it was a pretty harrowing story that uh, one of the fire officers told me today down in the south central areas of Los Angeles. Uh, Captain, you said something about the San Fernando Valley. There are fires there as well. Uh, there have been reported fires uh, in the, uh, the Pacoima area. We did last night have some fires. Uh, I don't have any reports at this particular time. I'd have to check with our dispatching center, which is on full alert, and the firefighters are assigned there, and the officers are doing a tremendous job. Um, yesterday, uh, answering over, three, well, since midnight last night, over 3,210 calls that uh, they had to dispatch on. So with uh, their help, that uh, it's really an intense situation. On the good side, there are good people in the community. The same group of firefighters that were uh, harassed by the uh, gun-yielding AK-47 uh, individuals, a group of uh, Hispanic uh, men bearing machetes uh, came and surrounded the firemen that were being harassed as they picked up their hose by another group of, of uh, individuals. They surrounded the firefighters and they escorted them away from these people that were harassing them and gave them refuge until the police could come to escort the firefighters out. So there are good things that are happening to the community for the firefighters and there are people in the community that are saying, thank God for you firefighters, we support you and we pray for you every day. So, you know, there, there are, and we know that, and that's why the firefighters are working hard for those people in the community because the firefighters themselves, are, they're assigned to this district in South Central or in Hollywood area. Those, are too, are our stores. Those are our markets that we shop in, that we bring business to the community. And, it, and it's hard for us to see the, the tragedy that the people in the community are suffering at this time also. We saw that, of course, was the latest from our sister station in Los Angeles where the chaos and devastation continues. Now here's Nick with a forecast, Nick. All right, Corian. well we had a few sprinkles that were in the area today and uh, there still are a few that are outside tonight, but I have some improving uh, news as far as the weather goes. That'll be happening during tomorrow and then we'll have to talk about the weekend. Well, of course, it's a weekend in New York area. You know what that means. Let's check out today's statistics. High was 62, the low is 42, below normal again. Whoa, I'm tripping on my cables around here. <laughs> the uh, temperature is about five degrees off the mark for this time of the year. No precip today, and officially in New York, but again, sprinkles in the area. 91 in 1942 and 1874, that's three days in a row for that year, 32. Right now it's 51. It's gotten a little more humid tonight, too. Wind out of the southeast, that's why. It's coming in off the ocean, the barometer 29.98 and rising. Across the area from our Long Island and North Jersey weather observers, we find temperatures basically in the high 40s to low 50s with cloudy skies, and the radar will show that a few sprinkles have been around, some passing across northeast Pennsylvania, heading to the northern suburbs, and now a lot of that is passing off to the east. So that's about it, really, for the night. I think the trend will be towards improvement, and you can see that also on the satellite picture. The line of clouds marking this cold front coming through is pushing on through, and back here, not a complete clearing out process, but there will be some sunshine coming out of that area tomorrow. Here's the front tonight, moving from New England down to Pennsylvania, cooler air to the north of it, 
hot air almost in the middle 80s across the Plain States today into the Midwest. Well, this front will play games with us by Saturday, so we'll have a nice day tomorrow, and then the clouds move in with a chance of showers Saturday. But the whole weekend's not dead, because I think by Sunday things will be better. Some showers will end tonight, 47 in town, low 40s in the suburbs, uh, even upper 30s in some spots. Partly sunny tomorrow, the clouds will gather late in the day, high of 65. There's the five-day forecast. Pretty mild on Saturday, about normal, 68, but there will be showers and a little sun. Then Sunday will be the best day of the weekend, 64, some clouds and sun. Much cooler weather, though, for Monday and Tuesday with temperatures in the upper 50s. And there you have it. Thank you, Nick. Alrighty, thank you, Nick. Carl's up next with sports. Right after this. A few more things you can do for $5 a day. Pay a horrendous library fine. Enjoy three pain-filled minutes of physical training with an ex-paratrooper. Get a couple of tacos. Lease a Honda Accord LX for 24 months. Once again, I recommend leasing the Honda Accord LX for 24 months. The Tri Honda 5 bucks a day leasing program. It comes to only $149 a month. Offer ends May 18th. There you are. Does your tap water have a sort of metallic taste, or maybe a chlorine flavor? Or perhaps it just smells a little funny? Well, don't put up with it. Get yourself a Brita water filter system. It's a pitcher with a filter that removes the things that can give your water that tap water taste. So remember, Brita water is better water. Got it? Brita is better. Brita is better. Good. Mmm, that is better. Brita, get yours at Macy's and Zabar's. When you and your family fly U.S. Air to Florida, you can expect memories that'll last far into the future. Unforgettable characters. Vacations that'll lift your spirits. A vacation that's a roaring success. U.S. Air to Universal Studios Florida. We give you the star treatment from takeoff to landing and beyond. Hello, I'm Susan Lucci. This month, you'll get a great deal when you lease a new Ford Taurus. Go on, do it. Right now, you can get a new Ford Taurus for only $2.95 a month with a red carpet lease through Ford Motor Credit. That's right, only $2.95 a month. We can't use it because my earring fell off. And this Taurus is loaded with a lot of great options. Plus, the Taurus is the only car in its class with dual airbags. For oh, I'm sorry. Now, lease a Ford Taurus for only $2.95 a month. The best built, the best selling cars today are at your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer. Los Angeles police say at least 18 people have been killed in the riding so far in Los Angeles. Let's go back now to Bill Ritter. Bill? Well, Coran, I'll tell you, it's a beehive of activity here at the command post. It's a lot busier than it was last night as the uh, dawn, dusk to dawn curfew for the first time begins citywide in Los Angeles, and clearly police are ready and expecting the worst, unfortunately. Let me show you some pictures we just took a few minutes ago. This is an apartment building, building engulfed in Hollywood about five miles north of here. Apparently, the violence and the arson is moving north into some of the more uh, middle-class residential areas. This apartment building is right near the Fox uh, local television station in Los Angeles. Apparently, we also heard, and I think I reported earlier, there were some shots fired in that area. Firefighters are taking care of that fire right now. That's about it from here. Uh, the curfew is about to begin. We will see how effective it is. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm sad to report that police are expecting the worst tonight. Let's just hope it doesn't happen. Reporting live from South Central, back to you in New York. All right, Bill. This has had quite an effect on the uh, sporting world, too, right, Carl? Yeah, indeed, John. Uh, the impact and magnitude of the events in Los Angeles have crossed over into the world of sports. The Dodger game against the Phillies was postponed tonight. The Clippers, Jazz, and the NBA playoff game also postponed. The Lakers held practice at the Forum today in Inglewood, about a mile away from some of last, ni some of last night's most intense riding. And they still don't know whether or not uh, tomorrow's playoff game against them and the Trailblazers is going to be played. And thoroughbred racing at Hollywood Park across the street from the Forum was also put on hold for at least today. Needless to say, the situation has everyone concerned, saddened, and a little on edge. Most of the players really concerned about their safety, and, you know, if they were to go outside of uh, the Marina del Rey area uh, with their lives being jeopardy or where any harm uh, uh, comes to them. It makes you stop and you know, realize that basketball is really not that important. Uh, there are a lot of people right now uh, losing their lives, getting beat up, a lot of places being... Uh, you know, destroyed by fire and, you know, sporting events right now uh, kind of pales in, in uh, comparison 
to what's going on. The message that's really being conveyed to the youth is one that's really concerning me. Uh, I don't really want to see what goes on at schools uh, in the upcoming weeks to, you know, ahead as well as um, what's really happening today. Just a lot of um, innocent victims being hurt, a lot of dreams and uh, really stories being torn apart because of what's happening in a lot of communities that uh, people don't really deserve or even ask for. All right, let's move on to uh, the Nets trying to stay alive in the NBA playoffs against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Nets home again trying to tie the best of five at 2-2. Little Louis Karnasaki in the land of the Giants here. <laughs> End of the first, Sam Bowie will get the three-pointer. The Nets were looking pretty good, up by 14 after the first quarter, 30-16. to Nets still rolling in the third. Drazen Petrovic, John Rowland's favorite player, ahead to Mookie Blaylock. Trailer is the Coleman. You can imagine what happens on this one. 22 points for Derek. Nets 55-46, but the Cavs came back. Elo gets the three-pointer. Cleveland 98-89, so the Nets season is over tonight. One NHL playoff score, Detroit 5-4 over Minnesota. The Red Wings win that series by a 4-3 count. As for the Knicks, well, they're still alive after the great effort Tuesday night, but boy, did they come close to blowing it. I tell you, Charles Oakley's bad pass almost cost him the game with time running out. Walt Frazier's good call explained the situation perfectly. Don't throw it away. Call timeout. Pat Riley should have hit him on the head to call timeout. He's right in front of him. You're right in front of your bench, man. How can you go like, you know, in a super? No question that they should have done something, Jim. Riley should have smacked him. Well, <laughs> smacked him. Riley should have smacked him. We should have <laughs> smacked him. Fortunately for Oakley and the Knicks, Newbar has returned the favor with this turnover, and Jackson got the steal. The Knicks took 2-1, to one, best of five, game four, Friday in Detroit. All right, the Mets uh, got out the brooms tonight at Shea Stadium looking to sweep the Astros. El Cid picked up where Cohn and Saberhagen left off in games uno and dos. He struck out the first eight of nine that he faced but left with no decision. Game was tied 3-3. In the third, Dave Magadan, who's been very, very hot of late, gets the RBI single to score two more. Mets 3-1 after three, but the bad news is the Mets fall 4-3. I'm Check that. I'm sorry. The Mets won tonight, four to three. Do boy, that. oh boy. Wow. Give them a heart attack. You, you the do. Mets won four to three. The Yankees <laughs> had the night off. A couple of finals. Giants nine three over the Cardinals. Montreal nine three over San Diego. And the American League Angels eight to five over the Indians. I did it on purpose because I wanted people to smile. Yeah, well, smack you around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a report for tonight. I'm John Rowland. And I'm Koran Mahalik. I'll see you back here tomorrow night on Fox News at seven. Then yes, we're back at ten. See you then. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Good night. Tomorrow on A Current Affair. I was terrified that somebody's beating my son. His screams were frightening. The cops were brutal. A mother comes to her son's defense. I was screaming, stop, stop. Now she's going to jail. Justice gone mad. Tomorrow at 7.30 on Fox 5 New York. Saab convertibles hail from Sweden, part of which lies within the Arctic Circle, which is why Saabs are rugged sure-footed on all surfaces and provide a large weatherproof sanctuary with a driver's side airbag and anti-lock brakes which makes Saab one convertible that won't be under the weather no matter what weather it's under get 3.9 percent financing on a Saab turbo convertible see your Saab dealer why spend all that time and money traveling to Disneyland? Discover Six Flags Great Adventure right here. 500 acres of rides, shows, and family fun. All the thrills, all the excitement, and all the fun of our great 1992 season are here. So take a drive in the country to Six Flags Great Adventure, because it's a whole lot closer and a whole lot bigger than Disneyland. Six Flags Great Adventure. Nothing else comes close. Bring a can of Coca-Cola Classic or caffeine-free Coca-Cola Classic and save. Why get stuck with the same old summer vacation? This summer, take home a Club Med vacation. There are Club Med villages for families, couples, and singles. It's Toyota's Automotive Achievement Awards celebration, saluting the greats of 92. For outstanding value in a new car, Toyota Camry. Named Best Import Family Sedan by Motor Trend, Camry has won praise from the press and audiences everywhere. And to thank all of the people who made this award possible, you can drive home a brand new Camry for under $200 a month. See all 
the winners in your Toyota dealer today. You are watching Fox 5. What's so great about the ocean spray cranberry? Perhaps we could put it this way. Sweet tart. Sweet tart. Ocean spray cran drinks. It's amazing what a little cran can do. And now a little cran can save you a lot of money when you refill with ocean spray liquid concentrate. Here we go again. Things you can do for $5 a day. Have a pair of trousers cleaned. Buy popcorn at the movies. Mail a very small package. Lease a Honda Accord LX for 24 months. I think you know what I would do. The Tri Honda 5 bucks a day leasing program. It comes to only $149 a month. Offer ends May 18th. How can you keep your kids from getting AIDS? Watch Inside Edition. A day of looting, beating, and burning leads to another night of chaos in Los Angeles in the wake of the Rodney King verdict. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Channel 2 News on the bloody aftermath of the Rodney King verdict. Here is the very latest now as we have it. You're going to be looking at a live picture from Los Angeles. Dozens area. of fires continue to burn in riot-torn neighborhoods. Oh, Police now say 18 people have been killed and more than 400 have been injured. Some were dragged from their cars and brutally beaten as they drove through riot areas, like this man who was then shot and killed. Looting is rampant. People are stealing everything from furs and clothing to food to hardware. National Guard troops have moved in to try and restore order, but with little success. A dusk to dawn curfew now is, in, is now being ignored, as we're told. Most of the rioting has been in the south central section of Los Angeles, which police describe as a war zone. And California Governor Pete Wilson is condemning the violence. There can be no excusing excessive force by a police officer there can be no excusing arson, theft, or deadly assault by a citizen. We are not going to tolerate either in California. But despite the warnings of California's governor, South Central Los Angeles continues to look like a war zone tonight. Dozens of fires are still burning, sending thick black smoke into the air. Hundreds of fires have been set since the violence broke out 24 hours ago. Streets are littered with debris, Hundreds of people are out on the streets, looting stores, carrying away whatever they can. One person took to ramming a van into the locked gates of a jewelry store to loot it. Police were only a couple of blocks away at the time, but did nothing until these pictures were broadcast live on local television. It seems the whole reason for the outrage, the acquittal of four police officers for beating Rodney King, has been lost. Why are you taking the merchandise? Because fun! While some are looting, others are expressing their anger by attacking innocent people who find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. This man was pulled from his truck and savagely beaten. Oh, look at that. Terrible. And there's no police presence down here. They will not enter the area. Quite frankly, we were overwhelmed. Uh, and uh, a response, uh, I wish, I'm a perfectionist, I wish it was, uh, had been much faster. When police finally do arrive to reports of looting or violence, they do so armed, ready to take action if a crowd turns on them. To help the police, California Governor Pete Wilson called in 2,000 National Guardsmen and 750 California Highway Patrol officers who are usually banned from city streets. President Bush has called for an end to the unrest. The murder and destruction in the streets of Los Angeles last night and today must be stopped. Lootings, beatings, and random violence against innocent victims must be condemned. And society cannot tolerate this kind of behavior. And you're looking at a live picture once again of Los Angeles. It is shortly after 8 o'clock there right now. We do have late word the violence in Los Angeles has spread to Santa Monica, 
which has closed its beaches, and to historic Hollywood Boulevard, where at least one business has been set on fire. Michelle? Well, this all began on March 3rd of 1991, when 27-year-old unemployed construction worker Rodney King was being arrested following a high-speed chase with police. Suddenly, police began to beat him. It was all captured on amateur videotape, shot from an apartment across the street. This notorious 81-second videotape was the prime evidence against the four police officers charged. Let's watch and listen. Many people wonder how jurors could have reached their decision after seeing that videotape. Channel 2's Mike Taibbi looks at the trial and the evidence. The case against the four police officers accused of beating Rodney King went from this videotape, broadcast repeatedly, to the scene in court yesterday that shocked much of the nation and triggered the riots in South Central LA. But if after seven weeks of trial the near unanimous reaction to the verdict was, I don't believe it, well then how did it happen? What did the jurors rely on besides that infamous 81 second videotape to reach a conclusion, a not guilty verdict, that was frankly unbelievable to most people? For one thing, defense lawyers did use the videotape itself, but in single frames and in slow motion. A lawyer who was shocked by the verdict after analyzing the trial as it progressed says the tactic was persuasive. For instance, at one point, uh, it's obvious Rodney King moves a foot. Last, that was construed as somehow him kicking at the police officer. Uh, however, when you watch it at regular speed, you can see that it was more or less like an involuntary uh, 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 flicker of, of his foot. That seed of doubt, says another legal analyst, was planted in the fertile soil of the overall defense strategy. They managed to divide the question of, was the force reasonable? From, could the officer have thought that the force was reasonable? One juror said all the jurors quickly accepted the latter premise. I am thoroughly convinced, as were the others, I believe, that Mr. King was in full control of the whole situation at all times. He uh, was not writhing in pain. He was moving to get away from the officers. And then there were the details about the trial that were followed by relatively few in the general public. That the defense had the better of the expert witnesses, especially a former frontline L.A. cop named Sergeant Charles Duke, who testified there was no excessive force. That King himself, who spoke publicly only at this press conference, was never called to tell his story to the jury, which eventually chose to believe the defense version of his condition that night. He gave every indication that he was under PCP, and apparently they don't feel pain when they have the drugs and the liquor and so on in them. And finally, that the makeup of the jury itself, no blacks, none with a college education, eight with military backgrounds, made guilty verdicts almost impossible. If you're prosecuting a civil rights case, this was the jury from hell. This was the worst possible jury you could have. Professor Newborn pointed out that this jury did not even find this a hard case, deciding on the not guilty verdicts in the very first day of deliberation. Newborn also said there may have been no body of evidence that would have convinced this jury to convict. Mike Taibbi, Channel 2 News. Okay, right now we're going to get an update from Los Angeles. Reporter Jose Greenon is live with the very latest on the story. Jose, what can you tell us? Well, Ernie, the situation here is sort of a, one of lawlessness. In fact, the level of lawlessness is almost beyond comprehension at this moment. There is a dusk to dawn curfew that has been instituted. Police are telling everyone out on the streets with loudspeakers to get off the streets. The National Guard contingent has been doubled by the governor from 2,000 to 4,000, and they now have orders to fire back if they are being fired upon. The, uh, the situation here, arson, looting, and scattered indiscriminate violence, that's what officials here are having to deal with. More than a thousand fires have been set since midnight 
and uh, fire officials who are trying to put these fires out are doing it with police guards standing by to prevent any sniping activity from taking place. And then if you go several blocks away, you can probably find looters who are going into other buildings, ransacking them and taking everything that they can out of them. It's sort of a cat and mouse game. Police and fire respond to a scene, the looters move on. Police and fire respond to that scene, the looters move on to another area. It's a constant thing that's been going on throughout the entire day. And uh, hopefully with the National Guard here, they might be able to, and they're hoping to be able to put a stop to some of this that's, that's taking place here Jose, in Los Angeles. Jose, this is Michelle Marsh. We have reports that the rioting has spread to Hollywood, to Westwood, uh, to parts of Santa Monica. What information do you have about that? Well, we have also been receiving some of those reports, but I have not been to some of those areas. Uh, if it has gone to those areas, and, and this is just from information that I've received from others who have been out, it is not as serious as it is here in the Los Angeles area because uh, it, it was central L.A., south central L.A., uh, where most of the activity was taking place, and it is spreading to other areas, and it seems to be just moving, but it's not throughout the entire city. So I'm assuming that those reports are correct, but I don't think the, the situation is as horrible or is as grave as it is here in the city of L.A. Okay, we may be getting back to you. Thank you, Jose Green, on reporting live for us in Los Angeles. The Rodney King verdict has touched off violent reactions in cities besides Los Angeles. Channel 2's Dana Tyler is live for us now in our newsroom with the latest on that part of the story. Dana? Ernie and Michelle, the anger is all over the nation and it has spilled from coast to coast with tension and violence tonight in several cities. In San Francisco, more than 350 people arrested after a massive protest. The crowd moved from Market Street to Knob Hill, a posh neighborhood where protesters came face to face with cops in riot gear. There was looting. Cars have been tipped over. Some of the cable cars have been vandalized. Earlier today, several hundred demonstrators from the University of California at Berkeley, you see them there marching across the Bay Bridge, blocking a key commuter route. In Atlanta tonight, the National Guard is on standby after a day of protest. 26 people have been injured. There have been 100 arrests. Earlier, a peaceful protest on the Atlanta University complex turned violent when 600 students moved downtown. Storefront windows were broken as protesters chanted the name of Rodney King. You can see right there people throwing rocks and bottles at people driving through downtown. They were pelted. Cops tried to do their best. They made arrests. And tonight, uh, Atlanta's Mayor Maynard Jackson has issued a curfew in that city. Protesters in San Jose smashed downtown window shops, uh, windows in California. Fights erupted between black and white students at a Tennessee high school. In Madison, Wisconsin, windshields of police cars were shattered. A note left on one car said, Justice for King. There have been peaceful rallies across the nation today in Minneapolis, Kansas City, and in Wilberforce, Ohio. We're keeping an eye on everything for you. Ernie and Michelle? Okay, thanks for the update, Dana, and we'll get back to you later in the broadcast. Well, stay with us for this special one-hour edition of Channel 2 News. We will have the latest on this convulsive night in Los Angeles and the shock waves rolling across the country. New York Mayor David Dinkins will be joining us in just a moment to talk live about his reaction to what's been going on and to talk about our area as well. Channel 2 News at 11, sponsored by 9X. My name is Daryl Rogers, and I'm from 9X Mobile Communications. Hey, Daryl. How's everything? How you doing? How you been? How you doing? Yeah, this is Daryl calling from 9X. Yeah, hi, this is Daryl. Wanda! If any of my customers call me with a problem, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to make sure that they get their problem straight now. Before we package it and bring it over to her, I just want to get together with her to find out if we're getting the right phone. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, Thanks for everything, Hillary. Bye -bye. I enjoy helping people. I've always enjoyed helping people. Then you can dial your mobile number. That's it? That's it. Call Daryl! <laughs> We find the phone or the phone equipment based on the customer's needs, and I'll oversee the entire operation. And no matter where you are or what you're doing, you have to communicate. I knew I'd hear from you soon. It's a new telephone. There's so much to tell about 9X Mobile. Communication is no longer a luxury. It leaves time to enjoy other things. It leaves time for living. Sensational values, the latest technology. Technique's 130-watt system with five-disc changer, high-speed dubbing, and Dolby surround. Close out $799. Sony's five-disc shelf system with dual deck, now just $499. Sony's portable CD system with graphic equalizer and cassette deck. Price break, $179.99. Macy's Audio Week sale, now through Saturday. 
If you spend a lot of time in your kitchen, the secret to beautiful skin is right under your nose. The basic ingredients are right there in your refrigerator. And we'll show you how to make your own. Body oils, lotions, mouthwash, face wash. With little effort and little expense. Find out how you can pamper yourself at home. And take a bite out of your beauty budget. It's simplified my life. Learn how to whip up a recipe for kitchen cosmetics. A troubleshooter report tomorrow at 11 on Channel 2 News. Presenting the Accord EX from Honda. With a new, more powerful engine. A refined suspension system for excellent handling. And cornering. Plus a driver's side airbag and anti-lock brakes. Tonight, many people in our area are outraged by the Rodney King verdict, but the situation remains calm here. Channel 2's Carol Ivana has the latest reaction. At Times Square and in their homes, New Yorkers watched the violence and the death toll rise in Los Angeles. This beating of a truck driver whose only crime was being in the wrong place at the wrong time drove home the anger and the abandoned emotion. While Los Angeles burns, New York is watching. I think we all need to look at um, what's going on with ourselves before we could just go around and just take the law in our own hands. Also, we got to look at what's going on in the court system there. I think we need to take another look at that. I'm sort of horrified by it that it's going on, that we've, got, we've come to 1992 and there's still this kind of tension racially going on. Well, I was just appalled and frightened by it. I, I found it incredibly frightening. The violence on the face of it is a reaction to yesterday's verdict, but some say it's more than that. People like Father Lawrence Lucas, who says it's the culmination of many things. The whole system, not just the justice system, but coupled with the economic, the political, the social uh, system, all come to head when you deal with such a monstrosity of injustice as what this demonstrated. At a revival meeting tonight in Harlem, the Reverend Wyatt Walker, a veteran of Martin Luther King's peaceful civil rights movement, deplored the violence. The people who are responsible for the lawlessness and the loss of life in Los Angeles and wherever it may have occurred are a very small minority of black life. Most black people are law-abiding citizens. But the violence continues, and so does the looting in the city's poorest neighborhoods. They were looting my store. When I got there, they tell me the insurance is going to pay. It's nothing personal. We don't mean it, and I'm sorry. Despite the violence, the call for peace is being heard coast to coast. And while most people understand the frustration, the destruction and loss of life is just intolerable. You cannot hurt innocent people. That is just wrong. Nothing excuses it. Over the next few days, the country will be looking for ways to deal with the fallout from yesterday's verdict. But over the next few months, we will have to be coming to grips with something even bigger than that where to go from here. In Manhattan, I'm Carol Ivana, Channel 2 News. Governor Mario Cuomo is prepared for the worst, but he says he doesn't expect any violence here. He issued an appeal for calm today, but also readied the National Guard to respond in case of trouble. He says it's all too easy for people to lose control of their anger. This is frightening. Um, but the best response you're capable of is this kind of madness. And that's what it is. It's madness. It's nothing else. It's not sane not going to achieve any purpose. It always makes me frightened, always makes me sick, and now it makes me alert because I'm the governor. Civil rights activists and leaders of the black community tonight called on New Yorkers to express their anger in nonviolent ways. And right now, Ernie is standing by with Mayor David Dinkins to discuss the chaos following the King verdict. Ernie? Okay, thank you, Michelle. Mayor Dinkins, you said something today earlier that was, I would I assume, very reassuring to a lot of people of New York. You said in reaction to what's going on in Los Angeles, that you sense that this is a very different city, that you expect reaction, but you do not expect any violence. What is the mood right now in this city? What do you sense? Well, there, there's the same anger and frustration at what many of us see as a miscarriage of justice. I was shocked at, at that. I'm, I'm a lawyer, and while I wasn't in the courtroom, didn't view the evidence, listen to the testimony, I did see the videotapes and read much about it, and I was outraged. I thought it was an out-and-out -out case of police brutality. So many people are angry about it, but my hope is that cooler heads will prevail in our town. 
such demonstrations as there will be will be peaceful ones, mm -hmm. recognizing that violence is not the answer to anything. And you're taking some action, as I understand. You have a couple of meetings scheduled well, tomorrow morning already. Yes, we uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. at Gracie Mansion, we will be convening a, a group of, I suppose, between two and 300 community leaders, members of the clergy, to explore where we are and some of the things that we've already done. One thing that I hope and pray will stand us in good stead is much of the work that had been ongoing uh, before Crown Heights, since Crown Heights, uh, nothing at all to do with Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but because we recognize the need to reach out. And that's why we've got in, in Crown Heights, for instance, a uh, Hasidic youth playing basketball with uh, African Americans. Right. We have this whole increase the Peace Corps effort to recruit a thousand people, train them in conflict resolutions. So we've got some efforts that are ongoing already. We didn't await a crisis. Using that as a backdrop, and given what's now happened in Los Angeles, what is going to be the impact in this city? What's going to change? Well, it, uh, things, I think, are around the country. Uh, people are going to see what happened in Los Angeles as further evidence that, that there is a, a lot of a racial division that, that uh, some people, this jury in particular, appear to behave and, uh, and vote along very racial lines. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm amazed at, at, at how they remove that case, change the venue to such a place in the first instance. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. This all looked like it was uh, history to us, that we had gone past all of this with Watts and, and Newark and so on. Certainly. And yet, you know, we're sort of going back. Are we well, you're, not? you're right, Ernie. Among the things that we have to do is to understand that, that this straw, this that set things off, uh, really was uh, some of the behaviors or reaction to conditions that already existed. The federal government has withdrawn from the urban centers of this country over the last uh, 10 or 12 years. That has an impact uh, where there is uh, insufficient funds for housing, for education, mm -hmm. and for health care, well. uh, absence of jobs. It all impacts. And then when you have uh, racism in some sections of, of our country uh, and you have circumstances like this, you're going to get this kind of reaction. Mayor Dinkins, thanks for joining us. We'll be following those uh, two meetings that you have scheduled for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Okay, Michelle. As we continue tonight, the age of videotape and how pictures now change and shape our world. Is this how your kids will spend their summer vacation? This summer, take home a Club Med vacation. There are Club Med villages for families, couples, and singles. Dodge Caravan. A special family value package means you get air conditioning at no extra charge. And that's not all. Now, 500 cash back means a price starting as low as $13,766, making Caravan the obvious choice during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. See your nearest Dodge dealer today and compare. An Indy engine today costs in excess of $100,000, so it is a major investment. And we, we think it's very important uh, to use Pennzoil to protect that investment. The quality of Pennzoil is very important to us. It's always high quality. Pennzoil outperforms any leading motor oil against viscosity breakdown. Pennzoil does its job. Performance, protection, quality. That says it all. Quality Pennzoil motor oil available at r s Strauss. It's Toyota's Automotive Achievement Awards celebration, saluting the greats of 92. For a best overall value, Toyota Tercel. Named the best overall value for the money by Complete Car Cost Guide, Tercel won praises from the press and audiences everywhere. It's affordable, reliable, it's the best time to buy. And to thank the people who made the award possible this month only, no payments for 90 days. See all the winners at your Toyota dealer today. Is this any way to fill your summer vacation? This summer, take home a Club Med vacation. There are Club Med villages for families, couples, and singles. And we're back now with our special edition of Channel 2 News at 11 o'clock. We're going to get the very latest live from Los Angeles. Reporter Will Spenz is standing by right now with that for us. Will? Uh, good evening, Ernie. We're standing in the middle of South Central Los Angeles. There have been 1,500 fires here since the Rodney King verdict. 
and there have been 17 dead. We are standing in front of one of the fires. This fire started last night. It was a furniture store. It was looted, and they set fire to it, and then uh, the fire went out, and they set fire to it again this afternoon, and this evening it is ablaze once again. All of us out here are escorted by California Highway Police, or LAPD. Everyone here is wearing a vest. There is a power outage in a large part of South Central Los Angeles. We are in a curfew area from uh, dusk to dawn, but uh, having traveled these streets, we can tell you that uh, this curfew is not really being observed. The top priority here for the police officers on the scene is to protect the firefighters. Some of these firemen have been out here for as long as 24 hours, and there is no let up in sight. It's expected they'll be here till dawn at least. Uh, the situation uh, in other parts of the city is uh, uh, apparently very tense and tight. South Central is the focus here in Los Angeles, however, as we go into a second night of difficulty in the wake of the Rodney King verdict. All right, thank you. Another long night in Los Angeles. Will Spence reporting live for us. Now let's go back to Michelle. The videotape of the Rodney King beating is only one of the dramas we've all been able to witness in this video age. Channel 2's Reggie Harris is here now with more on the vision provided by the eye that never blinks. Reg. Michelle, you know that one of the oldest and usually truest cliches is that seeing is believing. Cameras have become our extended eyes. When we see courageous students in Beijing's Tiananmen Square stand in front of tanks or see the Berlin Wall fall, we are there too. The use of moving pictures to make a case is now virtually expected. Video has changed all of us, often changed our thinking and changed the world because seeing is believing. America started to believe what the camera sees during the civil rights struggle. For those who doubted newspaper accounts of white southern hostility for and brutality of blacks, seeing was believing. It left an after image on the mind and forced America to scream, turn off the violence, you can't treat people that way. And video changed the way we looked at the Vietnam War. After years of dining with the gore of battle, we asked ourselves if saving that piece of humid jungle from communism was worth 55,000 American lives. Eventually, we answered no, but only after seeing and believing. Some people believe that this scene from a home video proved that Robert Chambers was cold and cruel enough to be a murderer. It was taped after he had been charged with the strangulation death of Jennifer Levin. Some people believe that suspects in the Central Park jogger case were guilty because they admitted it to police on videotape. Because scene is believing, police now use video to convict DWI suspects. You want to turn around, go back now, and you want to do it again. But even with the visual aids, some choose not to believe. Despite the vivid video horror of the Holocaust, some say it never happened or argue that it was less than purported. But most know that scene is believing. And now there is the world-famous Rodney King video, 56 blows from Los Angeles police nightsticks. But this time, throw out the video verification rule, because here we learn that scene is not always believing. I think what you have to do is you have to take the videotape and look at the job of what we've tried to get the jury to understand the duties of a police officer uh, encompass, and then attach that philosophy to what you see trying to take Mr. King into custody. In fact, the whole Rodney King video was never played for the jury, but it's hard to believe that they had never seen it. The jury was shown a frame-by-frame -frame series of still photos from the video and given reasons for why King brought the beating upon himself. What we had all seen, the jury did not believe. When we see just the bits of the video repeatedly, it looks like a horrendous thing. But when you see it in its entirety, and uh, I am thoroughly convinced, as were the others, I believe, that Mr. King was in full control of the whole situation at all times. Jurors reason that police used reasonable force. If you see it that way, you can believe the verdict. What America is seeing tonight on the streets of Los Angeles is anger that until now has been ignored. Not only anger over the verdict in the King case, is pent up rage that for the most part has not been seen, not believed. Michelle? Thank you, Reggie. We have more now on the rage in Los Angeles and whether the criminal justice system is fair to blacks. 
Ernie is standing by now with retired Judge Fritz Alexander, who is now New York City's Deputy Mayor for Public Safety. Ernie? All right, thank you, Michelle. Nice to have you with us tonight, sir. My pleasure. Many people say the key factor in this verdict was a clear case of racism. Uh, as you know, blacks have expressed an inability to get a fair shake in the justice system. With your experience, with your background, how do you assess that argument? I think it's clear that there is a perception mm -hmm. uh, within the black community, the African-American community, and indeed within many of the minority communities, uh, that they do not get a fair shake in the justice system. Uh, and it, of course, that perception, uh, whether that is the fact or not, the perception controls. You use the word perception, sir. What, 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 are, you, what are you telling us? I'm telling you that uh, having watched at that piece and a lot of us said to ourselves it's eerie is it ghoulish and yet at the same time if a country is going to favor the death penalty I guess we ought to be willing to face the reality of what it takes I agree I think executions ought to be telecast now that sounds telecast well, yeah I think that's horrible you say but I think people ought to face the consequences of public policy remember the Vietnam War was brought into the living rooms and people said after a while wait a second I don't think we want to do this so I think if executions are brought into the living rooms, people have to face that when you pull that switch, you watch people die. What about children? Do you want children to watch that? Well, I don't think I want children to watch it, but I want parents to control children on television on any size program. I'm not sure you could, though. Would it be worth it? Well, it's not pornography, except to some people it is. And I mean, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Watch an execution, see what the consequences are of a policy which says this is what we want the law to do. And then if you're for the death penalty, fine. You have a better understanding of it. Maybe you won't be for the death penalty. I think it is interesting that Fred Lucher has never witnessed an execution by one of his machines. We'll be right back in a moment. about you, but I don't like the way some auto service places treat women. I'm not a car expert, but I don't want to be treated like a child. And so many times I feel like the mechanic may be trying to pull one over on me, telling me my car needs something fixed when it probably doesn't. So I go to the Sears Auto Center. They're nice. I get a fair price. I trust them. And my car is ready when promised. That's all I want. And that's what I get at Sears. When this was grandfather's desk, every week I'd help grandma polish it with pledge. I'd spray, she'd wipe, and together we'd bring out its beautiful shine. Now that the desk is mine, I use touchable pledge, so even smears just disappear. Pledge, still shining after over 30 years with no buildup. And with new touchable pledge, smears just disappear. Grandma's gonna love it. New touchable pledge, still no buildup, new touchable shine. Welcome to the 90s, and welcome to a way to explore new horizons. Introducing the new four-door Explorer from Ford. Explore more total room for people and cargo than any competitor. Explore its exclusive push-button four-wheel drive. Explore its aerodynamic design. Discover new four-door Explorer from Ford. Have you driven a Ford? Send up a cross foot. Give me an object. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop. Hold it. 93 hours minimum. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you'll ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service okay. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Sick, abused. Your pet shop puppy may be the product of a disease-infested breeding mill. When you've been raised in a concentration camp, you don't know how to act. Plus, what if victims could tell criminals face-to-face -face about their pain? Watch 2020, Friday. Monday, a famous author is murdered. You moved the body? Well, nobody told me you were coming. But this story is missing a few pages. 
He sure knows how to get along with women. Peter Falk in an all-new Colombo movie special, Murder in Malibu, Monday. Prime Time from New York continues. Once again, Sam Donaldson. In southeastern Arizona, there is a high mountain, a powerful university, and a tiny red squirrel. And what they have to do with one another is presently the subject of a high-stakes drama being played out in the courts and in the Congress. When West was settled, nothing was allowed to stand in the way of the pioneers' taming of the land. But today, even a tiny creature like a red squirrel can threaten to block a big project undertaken in the name of scientific progress. And, as we discovered, can do it with a lot of people on its side. We want to look at life that has been traveling almost since the beginning of time. It tells us wonderful things about, about the origins of the universe. These creatures are dying. They're disappearing. Their critical habitat is being torn apart. The mountain is too unique. It means too much to too many people that let uh, an institution basically rip the heart out of it. This is the mountain the struggle is over. Mount Graham, a solitary mass rising almost 11,000 feet above the desert in southeastern Arizona. It stands alone. Geology